someone's shooting a gun at me, I'm running towards the bullets wishing one would take me. Because, you know, I, I just wish I'd die. And I'm, 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 in that, I'm, I'm caught up in that street life, man. That's what drugs and using takes me, man. I, like it's, it's like I do things that I just wish would kill me because I, I can't get it straight on the streets. Welcome back to the Invest in Yourself podcast. Today I'm joined by a former prison shot caller named Garrett McLendon. Garrett shares his journey through his drug-filled early life that led him to doing drugs and selling them. This only led to more close calls to death for him while he was on the streets. Garrett has been arrested so many times in his life that he built up a prison reputation, giving him the status of prison shot caller. Garrett has finally saw the light after a life-changing moment. Please subscribe to my channel for more interviews like this, and without further ado, Let's get into Garrett's story. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Today, I'm joined by Garrick McLinden. He is a former, I suppose, drug dealer that went to prison and changed his life around in a nutshell. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about his whole background and his life. And Garrett, I really appreciate you coming on today. Man, I appreciate you having me on this, man. I, you know, it's right up my alley. And I, you know, I, I enjoy the any kind I can carry a message, you know, and um and I know and look forward to maybe reaching out, getting somebody to reach out to me or reaching out to somebody and helping them in any way. You know? Yeah. Unless well, I, I like your shirt right there, man. And yeah, is that man. you? This is you something make that? in the works, something in the works for those, you know, for the people out there struggling, you know, yeah, I came from one and now I sort of got my hands in one and, um, and I, lo I love it. I love helping people. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, we'll take us back to your early life. What was it like growing up for you and what were some challenges that you faced? Uh man, I I'll take it back. Um, I, I don't know, five years old. I, I think I was four or five. My parents got divorced, and at that time, um, I, I went and I stayed with my mom. And um, from a early, I mean, like an early stage, that I just remember, you know, um, I, I, I like all of a sudden, like alcohol and drugs were like uh, active in the household, and there was a lot of fighting and a lot of abuse and a lot of and a lot of you know. A lot of confusion for me probably as a kid, you know, and, and then not having, you know, much. Like I, I remember like wearing my mom's shoes to school and like in, in, in elementary, you know, because, uh, you know, and um, and um, I know that um, I saw a lot about alcohol and drugs and what it could do to a family way before I got into it. And, uh, you know, my mom, you know, all of a sudden it seemed like uh, her disease got really good hold of her. You know, and and um, and so I, I was an active child, just watching my mom and and her boyfriend just you know do drugs and party. And and for a kid, that's great because we just got to do what we wanted. You know, we got to you know we we leave, right. you know we we leave and then we come back. You know, like back then I was I was for me it was like a BMX bike, and you know I leave in the morning on my BMX bike, and I I leave at you know breakfast and come back at dinner. You know, we we're in this ride in this ride all day long. You know, and uh, and uh, I'll tell you this, and, and um, one day, you know, um, as years progressed, you know, and the uh, and the and the violence got worse at the households, and and uh, and the and the household got a lot lot worse to live in. Um, you know, my I, I, I'm getting older, I'm, I'm paying more attention, and it, and it was just a matter of time. And um, my mom's, you know, a guy my mom was with, <clears throat> you know, he. You know, he um, became like a father figure to me. You know, by this time, my sister left the house. I'm I'm hanging on to my mom because I'm a, I'm a mama's boy at heart, and you know I wouldn't leave her. And what I did is um, I picked up right where I saw. Like you know, I started off drinking, drinking. You know, in junior high, and then I I, I started smoking weed in, in junior high, and then the next thing I know, I'm I'm drinking and smoking weed, and then the next thing I know, uh, all of a sudden, um, I got turned on. You know to to, it wasn't even crystal meth back then it was just speed you know and yeah. um how old were you uh i must have been 12 13 years old wow really young so when that how was that feeling of doing that like did you ever feel hesitant of, on doing like that big drug like crystal or, or you said speed so what i didn't was your thoughts I didn't think of nothing of it, man. I could just like I, when I took that first drink when I was around those kids, you know, or, or even, you know, or, or when I when I smoked that first joint, like I, I knew what the stuff was. And um, and it just was a matter of uh, all of a sudden I'm I'm doing a line and uh, and uh, I'm thinking nothing of it. 
you know and what it happened to me at this time is what i do is i just start hanging out with uh you know my mom's you know connection a lot more and um and and, uh, and he sort of you know he sort of feeds me and then and then uh, and, and then all of a sudden the path just this cross like I, I you go over this invisible line of what like from a party into a, a full-time day user you know and then i watched as i a kid coming from nothing you know like i I watched how I can maybe hustle or middleman and get into this and, and sort of and sort of get me some stuff that I didn't have, maybe a new pair of shoes, maybe some pants, maybe a, a fresh, clean white T-shirt in, in order to make me feel like I can fit in with the rest of the, the kids, you know. And um, by the time I'm a freshman in high school, I'm, I'm full fledged into my disease. I'm, 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 I'm smoking, I'm drinking and, I, and I'm doing speed. And, and, and all of a sudden, like crystal meth is coming into the, to the scene right now. And I'm and I and I. And um, I, I didn't draw, like, I don't remember ever drawing a sober breath, you know? I, wow. I, I just remember every single day. I know my mom left. My mom, I think she went to jail or something. I, I, I started staying, I was staying at my grandma's, but my great grandma's had this had this place and, and, I, and I sort of moved in there by myself. And it was like having my first little, uh, I'm 15 years old, have like my own little place. I mean, I, I can't cook rice. I, 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 I <laughs> I burnt rice. I, I, you know, I got one of these kids that I hang out with, man. Like he runs away from home and comes to my house. And I just remembered, you know, like, Hey man, I'm like, let's go to your house and rob them of all their food, you know, cause you know, and we went to his house and robbed them of all of his food. And, um, um, I got introduced to a, a lifestyle that I was going to carry with me for the, for the next 20 years. And that was, um, for, you know, selling drugs, you know, living on the streets and, um, and getting involved in gangs, you know, I, I, um, I, I started, I started, um, I mean, I dropped out of school. Um, I started hanging out with guys with, uh, you know, that were at least 10 years older than me. And, um, and I, and I got, uh, you know, and I, and I just loved the lifestyle of it. You know, I, I, I was, I was not only addicted to drugs and all that stuff, but I was addicted to the lifestyle that, that comes with it, the fast life, you know, and I absolutely, and I absolutely just, man, like it, it was, man, the, the next, the, you know, you don't never think like I, I wasn't like one to think about my future or like where it was going to take me, you know, I just yeah. know like the, the more and more I look in the mirror after, after using for weeks upon a time and, and being gone away from home weeks at a time that I'm showing up to eat and, uh, and I just see my body deteriorating and deteriorating, you know, like, uh, you know, drugs are rough on a person, you know, I'm all of a sudden. Yeah my teeth are, my teeth are coming out, you know, and, uh, and, um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm not really worried about eating. I'm just worried about feeding my habit, you know, more and more and more. And so for you, the way you fed it was just by becoming this drug dealer. And like when, in your beginning stages as, as a drug dealer, what did that look like? Like, what were you doing and how much were you doing that you can speak on or what, what was your um, process back then? My process is this, dude, is that it was my everything. So like, um, uh, you, 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 just sort of like a food chain you look upon and, and it, you know, you, you start off, I'm, I'm young, I'm 13 years, 12, 13 years old running these streets. By the time I'm, I'm 15, 16, I'm with these, uh, heavy, you know, I'm, I'm with these guys that are 10 years older than me and they're pretty, and they're pretty deep and, you know, and, and doing the stuff. And it seems like just as a pecking order comes along and people get, you know, and people get busted all of a sudden. It just seems like ten years go by, and all of a sudden it seems like it's your turn. And uh, I don't, I don't really keep track of what how much I was selling. I just know that uh, I, I never drew a sober breath. You yeah. know, and so yeah. like, and it, it just and like, and whether I, I, I you know, I, I got into, um, I know I, I was hanging out with people who made it, and uh, I got into like a manufacturing it, you know, and not on a really big, big scale, but into you know. Uh, to making some money and supporting my habit type thing and um and um man that that rush i mean uh way before it was like an addiction to drugs it seems like it was the rush of just uh, of selling the drugs you know I'm, I'm i'm on the streets you know like uh it was like a it was like a, a, a it was like a full-time job you know you're, you're you're going around you're picking up you're bagging it you're you know you're, you're on house to house collecting you know and uh it just seems like this 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 chain and it's like you know and, and then like everywhere you stop you're using you know and i i i wobbled that fence of like i, I wanted a job and a job and fit in with society 
but on the, uh, at night I run around and, and, and I, and I, and I, and I, I, I sell and do drugs, you know, and I just mean like it. And if I was hanging out with whoever had it and whoever could supply enough of it was just like, boom, you know, cause I just, and, and, and that was it, man. And, um, and by this time I'm, I'm 20 years old, you know, I, I, I 17 years old. I got a little, some, uh, some YA, you know, uh, experience, you know, uh, I get out from there at 18 years old. I'm going, you know, to the county jail for the first time. And, uh, which is scary as, as an 18 year old kid, you know, I'm, I'm a big kid, but I'm skinny, big kid, you know, and, uh, it's scary. It's scary. But, um, did you get picked up for dealing? Is that what happened for when I, got went to jail? Up. I got picked up dude? Cause I was, um, I was out joyriding a car and what I did is, uh, as um, I, I got picked up in that car at 17 years old, you know, and, yeah, uh, that's and silly. yeah, that's, you know, I, 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 I was out hanging with the bigger fellas and I, I feel like I was out there for, um, for a long time, you know, I was hanging out with the fellas for days on days. And I, and I was just like, man, I need, and after a while, like hanging out for like, you know, seven, eight, nine days or something like that. And everybody starts going to sleep. And I was like, man, I know the stolen cars here around the corner. So, so I, I grab it and I, I, you know, and I, and I drive it home and like, um, and I forgot to connect the brake lights, dude. So, so here <laughs> I is, you know, it's, yeah, ain't nothing, ain't nothing special. I just, I forgot to connect the brake lights. And so there it is, is that, uh, I get pulled over and, uh, and the cops arrest me and, uh, you know, here it is with another, you know, starting off this, cr this criminal record of mine. And, so, um, what was going to ask you when you got there to County jail, how did that feel then? Since you said you had these the feelings of being scared um um it was very 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 like you know you hear these war stories of uh the late 90s of of la county jail and uh i've been now that i've been to lots and lots of you know penitentiaries and and places that you know that the names used to scare me like now i i just know that like you know you you're you know, no one can call you the B word that I, you know, that I, I sort of grew up with people that already been there. And so that it seems like they were lacing me up the whole time. And, and, um, it's just about, Hey, you know, if, uh, these things, certain things happen, you, you take off on flight. No one can call you this. You, you can't show fear. You know, you gotta, you gotta push through it. Like, you know, whether you're scared or not and, uh, and, and, you know, and you can't, and you can't show like a sign of weakness. And so when I walked through, what I didn't do is I sort of kept to myself, you know, and I, 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 I made it respectful. I stayed in my rack, you know, and, um, and, uh, you know, and, um, you know, luckily like guys, I, since I was hanging out with guys that were 10 years older than me and all that stuff, I, I run into certain guys there that I knew and they pull me under their wing and, and they show me these ropes and, um, and, uh, you know, that, that was it, man. How long were you there? Um, at first, I don't know, man, it was, it was, it was short, my, you know, a few months there, a few months there, you know, by the age of, uh, 20, uh, like 20, you know, uh, uh, shit, it was like, you know, I, I don't even remember, dude. I just know that, um, at the age of, uh, like 20, 21, um, at the age of 20, 21, I was, uh, catching a chain to the penitentiary. You know, and I was going to uh, a level four yard in Tatchby State Prison. Damn. And that was, I, I, I was scared. I was scared. I ain't no doubt about it, man. I had a deep down ingrained in me. There was a, a fear, you know. And what, did you do something pretty bad to get there? Or like a level four is pretty, pretty Um easy? Yeah, just acts of violence, you know. Acts of violence, you know, putting hands on people, you know, drugs, you know. And, um, and of course, that stolen car, you know, you, you keep that just never that never stopped, you know, it, it, you know, at this time, like by the time I was 20 years old, I didn't have, like, you couldn't see me having a, like a driver's license was way far gone. And my, and my, uh, you know, that there's too much stuff at the beginning, like to get a driver's license. So I was just driving with no license. By this time I probably had like a hundred, you know, traffic tickets. I got my, I got my first car at 14, you know, so by the time I'm, I'm 20 years old, I got like a hundred traffic tickets. I'm, uh, I'm just disposing of cars. Like, you know, like, like empty, you know, empty baggies, you know, and, um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running these streets, dude. Like I, I can't stay off that thing about that for me is that I couldn't stay out. It seemed to me, I, I couldn't stay off the streets, running the streets. Like if I just could have stayed home and I don't know if it was because like, I really didn't have a home or the, 
or you know like or, or staying at my mom's house it just wasn't comfortable enough for me and like I, I stopped by this time i stopped talking to like my other side of my family my dad and stuff and i'm and i you know and i and i'm, I'm full-fledged just like giving my all to like the homeboys and 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 this life of of, of, of drugs and uh and uh you know so it landed you in prison though is where you're at it, it landed me and so at the age of 20 my my career as a you know career criminal or whatever started and um and i was just uh you know now now all the stuff that these older guys are telling me is making sense you know and um and i'm and my held up high and you know, i go into these jails i, I go in at 20 years old i i, I must have weighed under 100 i must have weighed 170 180 pounds you know and i get out you know um a year or two later you know uh, a couple you know like 18 months later dude and i'm like 270 pounds Damn. you know and i'm I'm humongous dude you know yeah. and uh and like i didn't even know like i, I didn't know i could even, like I, I was humongous as a, like all of a sudden like I, I i started eating and i and i got into working out you know and i and i and i did i just followed the suit in there i met some guy in there that put me under his wing and i sort of just you know and and, and as scary as like i wasn't like a I can't say that I, I was in there like scared, you know, I was more in there like scared that something was going to happen to me, you know, like uh, I might get stabbed in a riot, you know, uh, 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 of, 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 you know, of, of, of having to stab somebody myself or, or, or you know, or, or being in a predicament of, of, of a race riot or, uh, you know, of all these wars, you know, being outnumbered and getting jumped by, you know, 10 guys or something like that. That's what you're scared of. I'm not I'm not scared of uh, the everyday living of. Of, of prison or, or of jail I'm, I'm 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 it's like more or less getting getting caught slipping you know like if you're inside this system and uh and um you know like uh, uh and so the the people in there that were that were somebody like I, they sort of just put me under their wing man and and what it was it was back to back and shoulder to shoulder and it was just like man you got this like the real true calling of a brotherhood like maybe that's what i missed maybe maybe from not having a father in my life or something like that that what i really was looking for was a deep real connection with another guy like or a manly figure and and i found that in prison you know and so i'm getting out man and i and i get stuck in the cycle I get stuck in the cycle, man. I, I my crimes get worse. They don't get less. You know, I I, I got busted with weapons, manufacturing, chop shop. You know, uh, 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 you know, a gang fucking, you know, gang, you know, gang violence and a gang association and all this stuff. And um, and it's like I, it, it never stopped, man. Like I, I I be at places now. It seems like I get out. I get out for a month or two. I I immediately people always talk about, hey Garrett, when when you you know like you're you're leaving you're free you're you're leaving the shard and i i felt everything from free when i got out what i did is i felt thirsty for a drink for some reason i always wanted to celebrate every time i got out of a whether i was doing a violation or a term i i celebrate and i celebrate it with a drink and by the time that buzz and all that stuff kicked in and i get back home the the second thing i did is i as i i put drugs in my system and from there it was only a matter of time before the 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 my whole my lifestyle that i was living just before i got busted i would i would pick up right where i left off with the people who were remaining on the streets and i and i would just go deeper into that man and i i sell drugs and i and i and i you know and i and i'd be out like you know at the, all the hours of the night you shouldn't be out and um you know and that was good like my intentions were like i i wanted to stay like i wanted to work and i wanted to be like a member of society but like uh but like uh, as soon as I as soon as I took that drink or uh, you know or or, or 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 took a drink hit or fix and put it inside my system, dude, like it was just like all that stuff that I was that I really wanted or that good was man was was out the window, you know. Because what happened is I'd be out of house and even though like in my mind my in my delusion the the delusion that I was living in, I'd be like you know. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm just you know I'll, I'll get high for a week here and then I'll I'll check into parole. Right, I'll, I'll use a whizinator or a, or a, I'll drink some test free, you know, and I'll, I'll go piss my parole officer. I I get me a little cash paying job, you know, that, that to show proof to the to my parole officer. But I'd be out there at trap house and and and, and garages and on the streets, you know, hustling the sack all around, to, whether it was to support my habit or put money in my pocket. And uh, and then all of a sudden, like I'd be at a house and it get raided and get hit. And uh, mm, everybody, everybody in the house would get let go. But me, since my prison priors did, I, I, I get cuffed up. And at the very least, I get picked up for a violation. And my violation since I was, uh, you know, since I was, uh, 
you know, I, I got busted with weapons and, and violence and all this stuff it was never no half time. It was always a, a, my I had a year flat violation minimum. That seemed like every single time. So I, I get out for a month, month and a half, you know, at the at the tops month and a half, you know, maybe two, 45, 50 days. And uh, to me, I was like, that was a good run. And then boom, right back in a year flat going in, man. I, I had I had my daughter, at, you know, I, I get a girl pregnant. I have a daughter, you know, uh, um, it's it's not enough. You know, I, I have a dad that picked me up a few times and try to and try to talk, uh, uh, you know, and try to talk to me about like my my decisions and life choices. And I and I like I and my my decision and life choices were, you know, was like I, I'm, I think I'm going to die on the streets. I'm a, I'm a you know, like I was like I really was like I gave my all out there to the streets like that. That was me, man. Like that's I wanted to be out there. And I and I and I and I and I and, I, and, I, and it seems like that's all I knew. That's all I knew. Yeah. And for you, like, too, as well in prison, you being in there it kept you sober, didn't it? And at some extent, and you had some kind of, you know, mindset shift change because you were able to build up some weight. And then also you had some kind of power in there, too. Right. Absolutely, dude. Uh, I believe that um, I, 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 uh, um, I, I always, uh, I had to say, and I, I just don't, I forgot, man. It's about to run my heim. But, um, but uh, I, in the beginning, in the beginning, you know, my all throughout my 20s, you know, um, uh, I mean, I, I started doing prison time when people were smoking, you know, and then by the time I get down, there's, there, there's no smoking. But um, I, I, I always threw, uh, every time I get busted, like I go out there for the 35 to 48 or 52 days and I totally destroy myself in that time. Like, I, I, you know, I'd be, you know, I, I my all my weight would come off. All, I, I'd just be skin and bones and I, I'd get busted. And, and I, it was like, I got, I got, I got, I got saved. You know, I, I call it prison preserved. Yeah, I, I, I get out, I, I destroy myself with drugs and alcohol and, 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 and the street lifestyle, right? And I, I go into the system and I boom. And since I, I, I sober up and, and I, and, I, and, I, and I keep a sober path because I want my mind on the right track. And I and I walk this line in there to where like I, I felt at the very least I had to be an example of not getting loaded and, and being on my toes and, uh, you know, and, 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 and being somewhat of a, a like a, a shot caller in there, you know, as somebody that they lead, lead you know, look up to. Like I, I felt like a, I felt like a, I didn't want to get caught slipping, you know, right. I didn't want to get caught slipping, you know, because yeah, you, you were you, at a higher Higher, yeah. uh, you know, you had to be a role model in some kind of case for the uh, underlings, right? Like, I seen, yeah, I seen too many people be loaded inside there and get caught slipping, yeah. drugged at, you know, stabbed up, you know, a, a right something kicks off at an instant, man, and you're in the and you're chin to chest and and and, and boom, you know, it's a it, 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 and, and you're getting you know you're getting stuck, man. And I, I didn't want to be that man, so you know, like I I, I walked a straight nine, dude. Like uh, you know, like I. Uh, you know, I, I smoke cigarettes, drink coffee, you know, bullshit, you know, I, every night, like a, a couple of times on Christmas, you know, I, we, uh, I drank some Pruno, but I, I really didn't mean like drinking Pruno and getting drunk, first of all, because it's so nasty, you know, but uh, like, cause what, but, but like, once again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll, like I'm, I'm two different people. I, I, I start drinking in there, dude. And like all, all better off, dude. Like I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm, I'm 290 pounds, dude. Like it's, it's like, do you care? You know, like who, and then I'm like, who are you to tell me what to do? You know? And so like, yeah. uh, I'm in my cell beating up my cellies, you know, like it's, it's not, it's not a good thing. And so, uh, I was able to notice that stuff when I was in there though, you know, and, 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 but like, but the thing is, is this, immediately, as soon as I got out, Man, as soon as I put my feet, man, and touch ground, I, I, I get dropped off. Uh, you know, I get dropped off at the nearest, you know, my gate money to the nearest bus stop or train station or wherever to, to get home. And man, and I immediately, every single time, man, I pick up a drink every time, man, I celebrate, I celebrate me getting out dude, with a, with a 40, uh, mm -hmm. a 20 out, you know, a beer just to like calm my nerves, dude. And, um, you know, that's what would get your mind rolling into that that yeah. way of life again, and then yeah. it'd just be a cycle and be back it'd in there. The, and then the cycle is that it, it, what it do is it get my mind in like who's out, who's left, who owes me money, right? 
because now all these resentments I went into jail with and maybe since figured since I got busted, like uh, all this stuff is this charged like charge it to the game, uh, charge it to the streets or something like that. But like I start thinking and I, and I, and I, and I'm broke and I'm out there like trying to collect, you know? And so I immediately, you know, I, I get loaded and, um, and boom, there it is there. And, uh, you know, like I, I went from a four yard down to like, uh, you know, 15 years later, I'm on a, I'm on a one yard. You know, and I'm, I'm finally like, I'm, I'm, this is my whole goal, man. This is my whole goal. Like what I wanted to do is I wanted to do, I wanted to bring stuff inside of a prison system. Right. You know, and I, and I happened, you know, on a, on a couple of yards, I brought, you know, you know, you, you, you know, you coerce the guards or whatever like that to bring you some tobacco and stuff like this, man. But then like all of a sudden, like I, I started doing these drops, man, and I'm bringing, you know, I'm bringing some meth and I'm bringing some weed and I'm bringing tobacco inside the system, man. And I'm going to tell you, dude, it's like, it was like the, it was like the greatest ach achievement for me. Right. That was like, I, I, I live my dream here. Right. Now I'm getting loaded in there. I'm on a minimum yard. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm good. A friend of mine shows up, man, we're getting loaded together. You know, I'm on the yard and now it's no different than me being on the streets. You know, it's yeah. no different than being on the streets, dude. When, how did you even go about bringing that stuff in there, the drops and stuff? How did, how did that and, work? Uh, that's a whole that's a whole laid out observation of uh, that's a whole lot of time of watching uh, of watching everything that goes down in the yard, you know, and mm -hmm. um, and then having some people on the outside that that are uh, that are that that help you out, you know, whether, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's it's a whole drawn out process, dude. I I mean, I had people hopping the fence and running to the street and grabbing duffel bags and and then hopping back in. I had uh, people driving in on the premises and 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 shoving duffel bags out of their car into the you know you know trustees. I had um you know I, I had people showing up and just dropping stuff in the trash cans out front, you know, type thing, you know, and um and uh, it's just like a it's like a thing of you just sitting there observing and watching though. Uh, you know when you're when you i don't know it's like I, i've done so much time that you know you're just so uh so aware and so observant you know i don't know if it's like it's like that's like something it's like it's like it's like it's like prison you know you know ptsd or something like that that you're constantly aware you know and so like uh and what it is is like you watch the scheduling you know the counts yeah the drivers who's working none of this changes man it's always these people at this time go and you just watch this when you take it down and you note it and note it and note it, man. And uh, by the time I hit a minimum yard and stuff like this, man, they had cell phones and it was it was just something that was it was very easy for me to make happen, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, what was your like for you to really be able to do all this stuff? You were a, a shot caller. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shot collar, a, a, a peckerwood, a, 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 you know, a, a peckerwood shot collar inside the, the prison system, you know, uh, um, just a, a, a white, you know, a white down to earth white boy in there that, you know, I, I uh, no, I, I wasn't, I didn't, you know, I, I just, you know, I, yeah, just a peckerwood man, just a, you know, a white, a white peckerwood, a, a very large white peckerwood out there, you know, and, um, and well, maybe, how did they go go about coming at you, or did you go to them, or because you, you said someone took you under their they, wing? Right? The, early in the days, they, it seemed like I got groomed up by um by guys that were that were um you know one is uh, I'm six seven I'm you know I'm getting in there I'm I'm two hundred and seventy pounds people already are like you know I my presence already speaks for a lot for itself so a lot of times I hang out with guys that were big that were already lacing me up to to do this to make decisions and I, i'm seeing how these situations are being are being um are being you know handled and stuff like that you know checking the kites coming in reading the kites from people in the back you're just like you know you you, you know it's just a constant flow of everything and um and uh it was just like after a while it seems like i just show up and um and it was just handed to me you know mm. boom yeah you know, here your turn you know it's your turn it's a constant, you know, flow of people in there. Like, you know, like, it's just like, you know, and plus I was young and I, I was, you know, I was, I'm thirsty. I'm in my early twenties. I'm looking, I, I want it, you know, you know, and, um, and that's just the way it worked. You know, maybe it was, uh, my, maybe my decisions and maybe since I, my head was clear up in there and I, and stuff like that. And I, and I'd done so much time, like I was known in there. Like I was just like, 
you you know if you're in you know like in in, in the system and and from the valley or, or from antelope valley or in, in la county like in in the system like my name was there my name is around you know garrett you know so you know yeah and for you when you were at that position like was there a lot of people that reported to you or like how, how what does a prison shot collar do i suppose um on a for me uh it's just like you keep the peace between all the races, man. So like I, I keep the I, I have to keep the white boys uh you know in check, you know, make sure that you know we have laws in there, looks like we have laws in the streets. And you gotta make sure that you you know, like uh, people are abiding by those laws, you know, no debts, you know, uh no fighting with the other races, no doing this, making sure you like the those are our, you know, those are our bathrooms. These are our sinks. These are our, this is where we work out. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't be disrespecting other people or you're going to get disrespected, you know? And, um, and so like, I, I know we work out together. We stay strong together. We build one another and like, you know, and, 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 and it's like a unity thing in there, you know, it's like a unity. It's like a group of, of, of brothers, man, like that you, that you get a deep connection with, you know, and, um, and then it just went like I, I had, um, you know, you know, you, you sit back and, uh, you know, and uh, kites would come in from all over the place. You have a, a guy or two in every single building that, you know, that that sort of just lets you know what's going on on every block from A block to D block, you know, one to five, whatever it is. And and you um, and you just sort of you sort of just keep the peace, you know, you keep the peace, you know, so we're not so we're not into some some big old race war, you know, you know, uh, uh, but, and then there's times when it, it can happen. You get guys in there that, that would get their self in debt and, you know, and, uh, you know, a heroin debt or, or, you know, or something, mostly heroin, you know, tobacco debt later on, you know, and, um, and then, uh, the races would come to you and be like, Hey, this guy owes. And then, you know, you have to do what you have to do, you know? So what was one thing that you did enjoy being as a shot caller? um i always got looked after dude like uh i, I you know like guys i, I being a shot caller or, or being at someone that carried some weight inside there um uh, maybe it was a sense of power for me you know mm -hmm. uh it was a, a, like a sense of power like uh you know your ego's big or you didn't like this like, like you even though you could be touched you felt like you couldn't be touched you know uh, i got five guys around me and i'm in this i'm in the middle you know and it just felt mm -hmm. like, you know, I never had to go with that. I always had coffee. I always had cigarettes. I always, and that's pretty much all I needed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, smoking yep. and, and sick and, you know, and, um, and, um, and it, it really felt like you had a, a brotherhood of guys that would never leave you that, that, you know, that the connection with the, the close knit guys you got right there, like you knew that um, these guys had your back, you know? Like these guys, that these guys, like not only would you like die for them, like you would go in up against a, a, a you know, a, a, like straight gladiators, man, of, of savages and a, a, a riot or something like that. But you really, you really have like uh, these guys that you hung around every single day, know you better than any better you ever known your whole life, and their transparency between one another. You you walk through stuff and the on the yards together of uh, emotions of missing the streets and missing people and missing your family and all this stuff and trying to block all that stuff out, man. So you can be present inside the system and knowing that dude, Hey, like if, uh, if, uh, like, you know, it, it's just like a sense of security almost, you know? And, um, for me, I mean, maybe cause I was just bigger. It just like, I, I never really had to go up against anybody in a sense of like, oh like uh, i'm fighting you for this yard it was sort of like uh, maybe it was the way i carried myself and my level-headedness my you know neutrality to where i wasn't taking sides on this or that you know to where they're you know and then maybe that's just all the things that happened with me getting groomed from me being on the on the four yard you know and and then and then start you know my points start dropping and, and then my violations and my times get you know and it, it's just sort of like i got groomed to to have the structure you know, and mm -hmm. um, like, like, I think a lot of it, even too, like I take this mindset into the streets. I think a lot of it's just about a, a structure. Right. And, um, and being able to follow the structure, you know, you get some guys that come in there and like, they don't want to, they don't, they, they're not used to a structure. I was, I know I lived an undisciplined life out there on the streets. I, I as soon as I, as soon as I left the structured environment of prison, right. I go out there to an undisciplined 
unstructured lifestyle. And I last 30 to 45 days. I mean, there was times when I last seven to eight days, you know, five days, dude, I'd be right back in, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, in a 15 year stretch, I was out like one time for six months, dude. And I thought, and I, and I thought, man, I was doing good. And cause like, what it is, is I go in from a, a structured lifestyle to where like a, a level headed, I'm reading coffee book, you know, like this, whatever I can do to like, to like feed myself, you know, knowledge. And I go out, man. And it seems like as soon as I, as soon as I got, you know, left my cell and I went into this, you know, into R and R it, it seemed like, you know what, uh, it was like all this prison stuff was just like to the to the leaving there and i was going to the streets man and and i just and i went out there man and like and, and, and to where all i knew was to where all i knew was just running the streets and and drugs and violence up there. that's all i knew you know mm -hmm. and, my, and, I, and i and i go to undisciplined undisciplined nobody tell me when to sleep when to eat when to when to do anything and maybe that was like and to me maybe that felt like a freedom you know, I, I go out, you know, like I, I, I maybe I, I, I used to think that was freedom. I, I go in, I, I get out of, I get out of the system. Right. And I, I'm leaving prison behind. I, I did my time. I, I, I'm on a clear, clear base. Like I had one rule, man. You had to check in. Like you only had a few rules, right? You had to check into parole and you can't, and you can't, you know, you can't, you can't use, you know, you can get away with drinking. Right. But like drinking to me, like drinking to me leads to out to, to drugs. Right. So like, here it is, man. My uh, like, what a, the first thing I do. I mean, I try, man. I I try for like my first two or three days, maybe a week at times. I'd be like, man, I'm I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use. I I show up to the parole board meeting, and it'd be like ten to fifteen guys that I that I known, man. And that, it'd be like a meeting of everybody who's out at the time, and it were and we're all together, and we just start like who's sober, who's not, and all of a sudden I gravitate, man, and I. I, I get loaded, man. I, I walk, I, I go to the store to, you know, I run into somebody I know they, they, they bless me with drugs, you know, and they'd be like, here you go, Garrett. And they'd be just, and, 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 and they'd be on and, and be on and going for me, man. It'd be like gone, you know, you know, and, um, and I get busted every single time, every single yeah. time. Yeah. And, and so when was your last, uh, time you went to prison like what how did what what went down and what led you to actually changing i was like around thanksgiving around thanksgiving i've been out for not that long running the streets house to house uh i was in a i was out um hustling drugs on the streets and um like i said man i, I like you know um I, I i i bounce around house to house to house but uh I think at this, I think I, I caught a, a term in like 2011 to where it was like, you know, uh, I got pulled over and you had another stolen car and, um, you know, with some people and, uh, and, uh, I went to jail, you know, I get out a little bit later than that. And, um, you know, I, 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 I don't really know. I, I have to like pinpoint the dates and really think about it. I, I get out from, uh, I get out. I remember I got out one time and I was out for maybe five days, dude. And I was up since I got out and, uh, a cop, I was at a house. I got raided. I was, you know, staying at a trap house and the house got raided. They, uh, reached in my backpack, which, which I was living out at the time. And, um, he uh, stabbed himself with the syringes I had in there. So now it's like, I'm, I'm facing assault on an officer 15, you know, 15 years is that, you know, like I'm, I'm, it's like five, seven and three for the, my prison prior. So I'm looking at here. I am looking at like 18, 19 years, you know, for, for this cop, you know, who uh, stabbed himself with a syringe inside my backpack, you know, and now it's not, it's not even about the crimes I committed. Now I got such a record that it, it's like the, 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 the littlest of a slip up can just get me slipped up, you know, to where like, you know, and, uh, and um, I'll tell you what happened is that, um, I got picked up, dude. Uh, I'm really, you know, you, 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 you know, I got picked up and I, I went into that. I went in, I got busted. I get busted for drugs again, you know? And, uh, cause you know, for all that early in the days of, 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 of drug dealing and, 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 uh, manufacturing and guns and all that stuff, uh, what I become in the end and I just come full fledged addicted to the drugs. And my, my cycle is, is I get out. I get loaded and I just do whatever I had to do to get loaded. 
And uh, what happens is at the end, you know, I, I finally get a, I get arrested one more time. I'm, I'm, I'm shot out, dude. I got, you know, my teeth are, you know, like it, it, people don't want to be around you. You know, I, I'm, I'm isolated out in the desert, living in, in bushes and stuff. I'm, uh, you know, like um, I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of less like uh, I just go wherever. The, I'm like a robot, and I'm, a, you know, I'm like a slave to drugs and alcohol. And uh, I get busted, and they, and they offer me a program. And um, it wasn't my first, second, like, it was like my third, my third chance. And I, I, I arrived at this program and, um, and uh, I never looked back, you know, I sort of got away from my, from the areas and, and, and the playmates and, 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 and all the drugs and people I knew. And I separated myself in a way, you know, cause deep down, deep down for me being there, like deep down, man, like I, I wanted, I wanted better for myself, you know? And um, I just didn't know how to get it, man. I didn't know how to get it. And uh, finally, it was, uh, uh, you know, an opportunity came and, and uh, I just, I got into, uh, I got into recovery. I got into recovery full fledged, just like the same way I was out there on the streets or the same way I was in there when I was shot calling or running yards and stuff like that. I, I put all my time and energy in, in, into recovery, you know, and uh I, I, I was once again, uh, uh, you know, where I was born again. I, I learned a new way to live. I, I heard this thing, man. I love this. And it said, um, what's recovery like? And uh, I remember when I first got busted, those early times when I was in, in the county jail, 18, 19 years old. And what I learned is I, some guy, I remember like I, I learned how to shave in there. Like I didn't, my father didn't teach me to save, shave or anything like that. Like I, I, I remember I go in there, I'd be shaving my head with these orange grenade, you know, razor blades, you know, and I'd be, be cut and my I'd be blood just be everywhere you know like I I have court the next day so I'd be you know you're trying to shave all up for court like that that was the that was the best thing we can do man and um and so I learned how to shave right then and there and then years later dude this is what recovers like years later um I'm shaving in a bathroom at this at this uh at this you know at this treatment facility right and this and this guy asked me. He's like, "Do do you know how to shave?" I was like, "Well, I learned in jail." And um, he's like, "Well, here, let me show you, man." He's like, "Here's shaving cream. You know, you don't have to use soap no more. We got shaving cream. You know, we don't have single edge, you know, razors no more. We got you know triples and doubles, you know, and uh, you know hot water. This is the way you do it. And what it is is that." Uh, something that I thought I knew already, right? That I, I thought I knew how to live life, that that's, you know, my old way of living was just taught to me in a new way of living, you know? And someone showed me that. And so now today, man, I, I, my thing is, is I, I like to just show people what I was taught, man. You know, and that that's just a, a new way to live, dude. Like I, I, all that prison, I, I love, man. Like I, I don't, like, I don't have no regrets. I don't, I'm not here like, I'm not here saying that, you know, oh, I wish it never happened or like, you know, the streets were rough. Yeah, the streets were rough. Prison was hard. Like that met like the, the countless, you know, things of a, a therapy or, or whatever you have to go through, like all these trauma based things, you know, all the, you know, the childhood abuse and all this stuff, man. Uh, the one thing that helped me through all this stuff, man, is uh, is the 12 steps, man. So 12 steps of recovery, man, brought me into a, a, a new life, a new way of thinking, uh, uh and what it is, is I was willing to learn, man. I was willing, there was enough of me out of the way that, um, that I, that I, that I wanted to learn, you know, and here I am today, man, 11 years, you know, 11 years, uh, in, you know, I got out, I, I paroled for, uh, I paroled for the last time in, in like 2000, um, in 2012, you know, uh, I did a couple, I did some county time. I got in a, I was in a, I was still, you know, in 45 days and I, I, on a Valentine's day of 2013, I'm in a, I'm in a shootout on the streets and, uh, and, uh, I'm getting shot at, you know, I'm, 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 I'm I know, uh, someone's shooting the gun at me. I'm running towards the bullets, wishing one would take me because, you know, I, I just wish I'd die. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm in that, I'm, I'm caught up in that street life, man. That's where drugs and using takes me, man. I like, it's, it's like, I, 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 I do things that I just wish to kill me because I, 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 I can't get it straight on the streets. And uh, that night I get busted. I get busted, I get picked up again, man. Cops identify me walking out of a liquor store. They, they follow me to the house, you know, my hideout. And um, I get arrested, I get arrested, dude. And uh, they offered me a program. 
it was in a, it was way away and i and i went to this program and i and i just i just let somebody teach me a new way to live man that's it you know so that after that point you were just you were changed as you after they taught you some ways how to live new ways and all that man i'm i'm still uh i'm still learning these new ways to live man but what it is is i i you know uh i made a decision and i love it man like uh for like it seemed like for me i was uh i was a product of my environment and i let every and i let and i, I just sort of was like i get out there and the drugs and i just follow the drugs and alcohol around until uh things happened and i would just go back in the jail right and uh i walked into this office of this treatment center and uh that i was sent to and she gave me she 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 you know she she you know uh made it clear she was like uh if you want to go you can go and uh and i was sitting there thinking damn like what what do i this is this is this is what it came to me like what what do i have to go to absolutely nothing i have absolute i'm sitting there looking at this lady like man even if i could leave where would i go i got nothing man i got nothing and uh i said i'll stay and she said you know good choice you know prior to this a few minutes before this i was with my a guy that i met you know that i know him from the streets and all this stuff is you know i love levi man if levi's out there man uh reach out to me man but uh you know, he, he came through these doors and as I was sitting there contemplating leaving or going and he was like, and he has, and he just said some things that really warmed me. He's like, Hey, Garrett. He's like, Hey, he's like, Hey, big bro. He's like, so good to see you, man. And he, and he came up and he gave me this big old hug and he says, I really hope you stay. And then the next thing he said that just blew my mind away is man. He said, I got nine months. I've been here for nine months, dude. And for guys like me, man, like uh, nine minutes was a, was a long time to draw a sober breath. And uh, what it is, is I, I, I sort of got me a trudging buddy inside this treatment. So I was in a treatment for 16 months, you know, unlearning all the things that I learned. Unlearning, man, I, I like totally unlearning every single thing that like you swore by or thought was just like the, this is what I, this is what life is all about. Like I had to, I had to like, I had to like close a book that I've been writing or reading for so long, man. Like I, I had to close this book, man. And then someone gave me this, and then someone gave me this new book and said, I wanted to start writing now for this new, this new, you know, this new life of yours, you know? And I, in my life, man, like this new book is like, it outweighs this old book by far, you know, like uh, I go into this thing. It's like, uh, you know, like, uh, like you mean, like the, like the, the real, the real meaning of like that, the brotherhood, brotherly love, the, the freedom, the, the, you know, like, uh, like, you know, a, a gratitude and all this stuff, man. Like, uh, like, like it, it's, it's like, it, it, uh, I get to learn all this stuff, man. I get to relearn this new way to live. Just like that guy taught me a new way to shave. Right. And I let him teach me, man, like that, the people in this program have been teaching me a new way to live, man. I, 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 I like it. It's beyond, it's beyond like my, my uh yeah my only my only my only answer to anything that ever happened to my, in me in my life was uh was to um was to drink and use i see i didn't want to solve a problem or face anything or or do anything like that and, until i had drugs and alcohol in my system and now and now like like that that's not my that's not an option that's not my solution, man. Like, like, like some things in life hurt. My parents passed away. Like it, that was an emotional, you know, emotionally draining and hurtfulness that was inside me that like, just like, that just like, you know, like I, I walked through it, man. I didn't drink and I did not use, I didn't use nothing to, to hide or, or to not feel or to be numb. Like I've been, like I, I walked through all this stuff and I think walking through stuff like that and, and the hurt and the pain and that trauma and all this stuff that you can't really explain, man. Like you get to grow through it, man. And I, and I'm going to tell you what really gets me to grow through it, man, is like, I, I meet guys that are fresh out of jail that, that were living a life just like me, a uh, uh, uh the street life, the gangs, uh, you know, drugs and, and this, and like the streets were hard on us out there, man, you know, and, um, I meet these guys that are lost, man, or at 25 or 35 or, or wherever their age limit is, they're just lost at life, dude. And I, and I, I relate to that because I was that person, you know, and here I am as I, as I, as I, they, they come up to me and they ask me to help them do, and there are guys that you would think, man, they're, they're blasted from head to toe. They're, 
you know, like we there, they've been in the war zones. We've seen stuff that people shouldn't see. We like we we witnessed stuff people shouldn't witness. We've been in scenarios that like normal people would like it would be like blow their mind. I can't have conversations with people at 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 normal parties and stuff like that because like my my first 20 years and my first 33 years of my life was way different than a lot of people's. I mean, there's similarities, but there's a lot different, you know. But then I meet these people like that. And we can share this common bond of one addict talking to another, one alcoholic talking to another, another one criminal talking to another, one convict talking to another. And we can get this stuff out comfortably and with ease with one another, man, so we can grow. And we can grow to be products, you know, we can grow to be members and, and productive members of society, man. And that's like my goal, man, is just like, man, how, how to be a dad again, how to be a, a son again, uh, you know, how to, how to, how to how to go to work. Like I, I, I don't like all that stuff. Like they teach you that. I was talking about that freedom through discipline, man. It's like my thing, dude. Like I, I was in jail and I was in prison and, 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 it, and it gave me a disciplined lifestyle, a disciplined lifestyle, man. And I, I go to treatment, man. What is it, man? It's a, a disciplined lifestyle, right? When to eat, when to shower, when, make, the, the basic stuff, man. Like, you know, wake up and brush your teeth, you know, make your bed, you know, do your own laundry. You know what I'm saying? make some food like that's all this stuff man like like that's what we have to ingrained in this stuff man that's what i that's what i do man I, I have that discipline of at the very least i wake up you know i brush my teeth i make my bed to this day brush my teeth i make my bed i drink a cup of coffee i, I do morning meditations and prayers dude and i get on with my day dude you know i'm, I'm, I'm I, I show an attitude of gratitude you know and I keep my hand and I, and I, and I, and I voluntarily keep my hand stretched out there to a, to another member, another, another guy, another girl who's out there who's suffering, man, because it's not that I, it's because of what it is, is I have a, I relate to it. I don't, my life, I don't let my gifts of recovery get in the way of gifts of recovery. I just, I have to, I have to keep down in the trenches. To let me know. I'm, I'm no different than anybody else, man. I'm, I'm, I'm the same distance from a drink hit or fix than anybody else. And I, I keep, I, I, I keep out there, man, in the work of it, man, of helping other people. What helps me is helping other people, man. All the, there's no trauma. The, there's no, there's no like, uh, there's no hurt. There's no pain. There's no like resentments. There's no nothing, man. Like I, I learned just to, to walk through life, man. The best I know how to live and 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 and, and to keep growing, you know, and I, I just keep on growing emotionally and mentally and spiritually, man. Because I of all those things are what I was completely bankrupt in every aspect of life out there, man. And um, I, sounds, I, you know, I was, gonna, I was gonna say it sounds like everything really came full circle for you, like full circle, man. Yeah, absolutely. From helping people out. From where you were, you could really help a lot of people out. And I think you are going to continue to because you know how to relate to them. You know what they've been through. You can, you know, share war stories, whatever it may be. But th just by you sharing your your story, your redemption aspect of it can really just go a long way because there's thousands of other people out there that have been in the same situation or still may be in the same situation that you were in at one time. So for you to be out here and uh, still alive and just being able to fully function and uh, just tell your story, man, it's it's pretty impressive. So just keep doing what you're doing. I like it. I, I think you're doing a lot of good things and it just it's a lot of good motivation and inspiration for people to draw to you, man. And like, what do you do now? Like, what is your your main goal to to do? I mean, it's helping people, right? Uh, my main goal is to help people, dude, because if I'm not helping them, if I'm not helping, if I'm not letting this flow of uh, stuff that I get, man, go through me, like uh, everything I learned in the and the meetings and recovery and, and helping, like it's it's like a thing, man. It's like uh, if water was just to roll into one, like if you know you have like a, if water was just to flow through and stop, man, it it it, it gets all dirty and clammy and and just and it gets still and, and you know and, and and all this stuff, man. And the stream of life is to flow through. So what it is, man, is I have to let this, all this stuff that I learned, man, it's like each one teach one, you know, it's just like, I have to let it flow through me, man. And I have to, and I, I just, I just love helping people, man. It's just, it's my way of life, dude. It's, uh, if, if I could help somebody, whether it's, uh, to, you know, uh, 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 and life skills or, you know, or whatever, man, uh, working out in fitness, you know, uh, of, of, uh, in, in recovery of, uh, if, if, at the very least, dude, like if, if I'm an example. You know, 
I'm a, I'm, I'm a father today, a small business owner, you know, like I, I, I got all these, I got all these great things because of, uh, because I'm, uh, you know, because of, of, of this way I, I started living, you know, and, uh, and, and my best thing is, is I just like that. I just like helping other people, man. Cause I, I learned most about me and like, I'm able to see like, as I'm, I'm, as I'm talking to somebody else, like they're able to, they, like, they say something that, that, that was going at me. So it's, as much as I'm helping all these other people, but helping all these other people, it's helping me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and, and like, they, they water me, man. Like they, 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 they water me. And I, but like, I feel like if I'm not helping other people, that means I'm, I'm being, I'm being selfish and self-centered. And that's what I was before I came out. That's what it was for me when I, when I, when I was out there living the streets, you know, and, and out there, I was selfish, man. Like it was for me to, to, to put a, a drink hit or fix inside my system, dude. I'm, I'm, like I, there's times, man, I had track marks from my ankles up to my neck, all the way down my arms. I got bandanas wrapped around my arms. I'm, I'm out there on the streets. You know, I learned to, I learned to put a, I, put, I learned to put a needle in my arm in, in, in prison, you know? And, um, now, man, I get uh, my life, man, the, the way I look, I'm, I'm not ashamed of who I am today. You know, I, I have a smile today. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm uh, to be loving and kind and all that stuff is the way I live by today. And yeah. I, I just, I just like my whole thing is, man, what they, they have taught me as I, I gone through the 12 steps, dude, is that I, you know, like I, I have to, I, I, I can't just do these 12 steps and, and hold on to it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do the 12 steps and give it away. And, it, and, and the 12 steps work the best when you give it away. That's when they start working in your life, man. And uh, and uh, life just keeps on getting better and better, man. No matter how I feel or how I think, dude, it's all about the action you take, man. That's yeah. true. Well, you are a prime example of someone who can cha- who changes their life around and has done better with their life. And it's just shows that change is possible, man. So, I, Garrett, I really do appreciate you taking out some time and coming on and sharing your your story today it's been really it's been good man it's just really uh impactful and really all also you know entertaining of course because you're great at speaking and just really telling out a story in detail and just going into it and really explaining what the mindset was and captivating every moment of what you were going through your thoughts and everything so garrett i do appreciate it you got any final words man uh this man, follow me on I, I Instagram or you know, reach out to me, man, if you need anything, man. I, I, you know, I'm here to help. So thank you, man. Thank you. Garrett went from a drug addict and drug dealer to a motivational speaker. It surely took a long time for him to change his life, but he did it. That's what counts. He faced death many times and knows that his life was spared for a real reason. Please comment any key takeaways that you got from this interview with Garrett. Please share it with anyone that you think will enjoy this type of interview. Please be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this podcast. Hit that notification bell if you want to get notified when the next podcast comes out. Hit subscribe if you want to continue to get more videos from me. At the end of this video, a playlist will pop up of all the other Invest in Yourself podcast episodes. Thank you again so much for watching, and of course, we'll see you on the next one.